Hey lovelies, thanks for stopping by my channel today. I am more than excited. I know I always say I'm excited, but today I am more than excited to be playing with the brand new Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder with all of you. Now, I know that there are already quite a few videos out there on this product, so I really wanted to take the time to delve into this, try it out, and really come with a true and honest review rather than just a first impressions. Now, if we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I am a professional hair and makeup artist and here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real. Real honest, real relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. So on the note of us not knowing each other, I just want to say that I am 40 years old, almost 41, that's gonna be here before I know it. And I would say I have normal to dry skin or dry to normal. You know, when you're like, I'm really more on the dry side, but as we lean into spring and summer, I will probably tip more into the normal side. Now, if you do know me and you've been following me for a little bit, you are probably already well aware of my love for Danessa Myricks. I have many products from her that I love, some of which I will be swatching in comparison to a couple of these yummy skin balms. I'm going to keep my bias out of this video, of course, and give you my full and honest thoughts. I'm keeping it real here, like I say in my tagline. So we're gonna dive in. I really wanna focus on my tips and tricks in using this product. I feel like my makeup artistry background and the fact that I've been using this for a while in several different ways will hopefully help all of you who are looking at this product and curious on buying it. I will share with you the best ways to apply, what I found really works well for me, who I think this product will be great for, and who I think should avoid it. Let's go ahead and dive into this. If you do find value in this content, don't forget to give it a like. Let's get going. All right, hello and welcome to the up close of my naked face. So I just wanna let you all know that the only thing I have on right now is a sunscreen moisturizer. I honestly skipped the rest of my skincare today. I got up and I just, I just couldn't with all of it. I had an appointment to get to. I was running out the door and I was like, oh my God, you don't even have sunscreen on your face. So I just threw on a little bit of a moisturizing sunscreen. That is all we have going. As I think I mentioned in the intro of this, I did pick up three shades of the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder. I wanted to get the universal shade as a primer or as a touch-up product. I thought that this would be really nice to have in my kit. And then I also picked up shade three to use as my all-over shade, and then also shade six to hopefully be able to use as a bronzer. Now, while today in this application, we are going to be using all three of these products together. I wanna let you know that I have used each of these individually with other like ride or die products that I have so that I could give you like a true testimony on each of them on their own in the ways that I thought maybe I could use them. And I will be getting more into that at the end of this video when we're talking about my full review of this product. So we are going to be starting off with the Universal Shade as our primer. And of course, I'm sure you've already seen the packaging. It's this beautiful, like, mm, caramel, kind of like metallic coppery packaging. It does have a little applicator spatula here, which I think is nice, you know, if you are going to be using this as a working makeup artist, if you're just looking to keep your products clean and not put your dirty paws on them, or if you're like me and you just don't love that sensorial experience. Ugh. So here is what the uh, Universal looks like. Again, I am just gonna take a tiny little bit and put that on the back of my hand. So that I would say is like a pea size, if you will. Now I'm going to place this product with my fingers, uh, mostly just in the areas that I get a little bit of shine, a little bit of, you know, enhanced pores, if you will. Now, as I'm working this product in, by the way, I'm using this like ancient, <laughs> ancient pro mini flawless brush from Sephora. Uh, I'm just gonna like buff this in. I do find that a dense brush works really nice for this. Now, I'm not going to use this all over my face as a primer, especially if I'm going to be using another shade of the balm as my base product, because for me, if I'm looking to help balance oils, if I'm looking to help blur my pores, that all kind of like lives right in here. So I'm really just using this to like spot treat and to prime the areas that I need that extra oil absorption or I'm looking to cut down on some shine. So you've probably seen that the hero ingredient in this product is Upsolite, which is said to help absorb oil and sweat. It's really just going to help balance the skin out without leaving it too dry. So I was really excited to hear about this product containing Upsolite because it really sounds like a good balancing product that isn't going to be too harsh for drier skin. This does also contain squalane and hyaluronic acid, which are both going to help add moisture. And squalane also has the extra benefit of being known to help balance oil production. So this really sounds like the perfect miracle product, doesn't it? We'll get into my thoughts on that as we get through here. But I just wanted to show you, I personally feel like on my naked skin, like I just feel like this looks 
more refined, more like slightly blurred, slightly filtered. Now, a big part of that is just the fact that my face is less shiny. Anytime you have a reflective surface, it is going to show more texture. Think about a wall in your house that maybe has a textured surface to it. So if you apply a eggshell finish paint, it's going to look more smooth than it does if you apply, let's say, a semi-gloss paint. So we have just taken our face down to like eggshell. It's not like super, super matte, but it's also not really shiny. So already the light is not going to bounce off that in the way that it shows more imperfections, pores, things like that. So. That is kind of going to happen anytime that you're using something that's slightly mattifying. Now the key is not to have it so matte that it makes you look crispity, crunchity, right? All right, now moving into shade three. So here you can see on the back of my hand, I'm going to start with that much. We will see if I need a little more or if I don't end up using all of this. I am just again going to use the back of my hand and place this down with my fingers. Again, I like to go ahead and start with this mostly on the center of the face uh, because that's, you know, really where most of what I want to cover is my redness. Of course, I have some, I don't think I actually have many active breakouts, maybe a couple down on my chin, but everything else here is pretty much just hyperpigmentation, but I definitely have some redness. Right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the buffing mineral powder brush from It Cosmetics and put this through. I will say, uh, right off the bat, I'm just gonna give you a little tip now. I do think that a dense brush, as dense as you can get, is probably the best for this. This is maybe not quite as dense as I would probably prefer, but I like the fact that this is just a little bit smaller than some of my like bigger dense brushes. So this is gonna be the one that we go through with today. Uh, one of the things that I think I've seen, you know, reviews kind of all over the board with this product. I think a lot of people are applying way too much of this. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that right now. I think a lot of people are applying way, way, way too much of this. I personally think that this is not a product that is going to be best when you are trying to get a full coverage finish. I, I just don't think that that's what this is really going to do. I don't even know what Danessa claims the coverage is on this. Okay, so on the Danessa Myricks website, in the info box, it tells you how to get sheer coverage and it also tells you how to add coverage. But it doesn't really say like what coverage she claims that this is, but I, I could have sworn that I saw it somewhere. If I do see it, I will add it down here. But I personally don't think if full coverage is your jam, you are not going to get that from this product. Or if you do, it, it's not gonna look cute after a while. Let's, let's just put it there. So, I mean, for me, I would say that this product is almost like a tinted moisturizer level of coverage, you know, that like light, yeah, light coverage. I, I wouldn't even say that this is gonna be medium because for me, I, I wouldn't want that texture built up to a medium, but I think that it does give a really nice, beautiful light coverage. Uh, and it also, you know, just is very, very flattering on the skin because of that like natural matte or what I would actually consider as a satin finish. Because to me, this, it takes down the shine, but it doesn't take down the radiance. Does that make sense to anybody? Like, I feel like my skin still looks healthy, but not like not flat, it's not a flat look. And I really like that. So this is about as much as I would put on. You might've noticed that I did not put a lot up underneath my eyes. That is something that I have noticed. I do not like this product up underneath the eyes. Uh, and for me, you know, I'm 40. I have some fine lines and wrinkles. Definitely anything that makes me feel a little bit more matte under the eyes isn't always a great thing. I don't feel like it's drying but I don't feel like it's flattering either. And I feel like you would have to let this sit and set a while before you put your concealer on because it does start out. Like if you see on the back of my hand, this has a little bit of a glow to it. It still feels rather balmy. It isn't until you really work this into the skin that you get that more matte finish. So you really have to have it thinned out for it to dry down. And that to me is like, this is definitely that balm to powder finish. It doesn't feel tacky on the face. It also doesn't feel chalky on the face, in my opinion. So hopefully here you can see, and I will say I'm trying to use 
I have about like 50% natural light and 50% studio light on right now. It's a fairly sunny day outside, so I was trying to use a little bit of that just to give you guys a bit more natural effect. But once I have my makeup all on, I will do an outside shot so that you can see in natural light. And then I will also check in with you at the end of the day in natural and slightly enhanced lighting as well. But I do, I do really like the finish of this to start with. So now I'm gonna go ahead and brighten up. I'm gonna go through with the Oma Stay Woke Concealer because this is a tried and true favorite of mine and that's always what I wanna do when I go through and do a wear test. Even though, like I said, I've already done several wear tests with this product, but for you today, this is the one I'm going to use. I'm just gonna use it to prime my eyelid and my under eye. I'm probably not gonna put any anywhere else, so I'm just gonna do that quick. I'll probably throw on a brow and I'll be right back. All right, feeling a bit better with brighter eyes. My allergies are for real right now, so I feel like my whole eye area gets very red, but I did go ahead and just put a little bit of that just right through here, and then I did one little down the nose, almost like a highlight shade or a reverse contour, if you will. I'm not all about the nose contouring, but I do like to just like lighten up the center to sort of give a little illusion that I contoured. Now going through with shade six as a bronzer. Now I picked up shade six because on the website, Danessa describes this as tan with neutral undertones. I was sort of torn between that and number five, medium tan with golden undertones, but I didn't want anything too warm. I really like something that's fairly neutral. And by the way, I didn't mention the tones of shade three, which is what I have all over. That is listed as light medium with neutral undertones. And I think it's a pretty dead ringer shade for me. I think as I get into the summer, it might be just a tish too light, just a, just a smidgen. But uh, for right now, it's working really well. Anyway, we're going to go through with shade six. I, so I'm just working this into a brush and we're just going to apply. So you will see as I go through here, uh, the one thing that I feel about this shade, I don't know how I feel about this tone. So to me, this is not neutral. To me, this is very olive. And I can usually get down with a good olive shade. So I'm not overly bothered by it because I am like neutral to warm with what I would say are olive undertones. But I feel like this, honestly, this shade might look a bit odd on some people. I, I feel like I can make it work, but I feel like on some people it's going to look a bit odd, especially if you have cooler undertones. So I don't, I don't know if this olive comes from trying to mix a neutral by taking a cool tone like blue and mixing it with a warm, like a yellow, which is of course going to make green. I just feel like it has a little bit of that olivey tone to it. it. It doesn't bother me a lot, but I, again, I feel like especially if you have cool undertones, this is gonna look a little odd on you. So I would love to know, I would love to know in the comments if you picked up a shade as a bronzer, if you got one that you feel like is an olive, because I know that my friend Aileen over at Amerch Beauty is also doing a video and she picked up a different shade because she's darker than me. She also lives in Florida, so she will be darker than me forever and ever and probably even darker than me <laughs> when we get into the summer. But anyway, so I will link her video down below if you wanna hear her thoughts and the shades that she used if you're darker than I am and you wanna see someone else using this. She also has oily skin, by the way. But I would just really love to know if anyone got a shade to use as like a bronzer that they feel like is a true like neutral shade. So I am going to compare this product to a couple other Danessa Myricks products that I use as like bronzer slash contours. That will be coming later in the video if you do want to see that. So here is the final look at shade six used over shade three. I think I can pull it off. Like I think that for me, this really looks pretty good. I do actually also think that the nice thing about shade six for me is I can mix a little bit into shade three as we get more into the summer. I get a little bit more tan and my warm to olive skin tone starts coming out a little bit more. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of my makeup. I probably will try to use all Danessa's products just because we kind of got a full face situation going on here, but I'm just gonna keep it more like no makeup makeup-y. So I'll come back with the details on that. I did want to let you know that while I did go ahead and powder the places that I put concealer, at least on my eyelid and under eye, I didn't actually set powder on my nose because I thought that this way it would be a good way to see the shine control, oil control properties as we get through the day, but I'm not going to be using a setting spray and I'm not using powder anywhere else on my face. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up. I will come back, give you details on the look, and then we'll do a wear test and see how the yummy skin balm works on me throughout the right. day. We're back, 
feeling very fresh faced and I know that this is probably going to last all day long. That is one thing I will say about a lot of the Danessa Mavericks I have. Whew, it lasts a long time. So I just want to give you a very quick download on what I'm wearing on my eyes. Oh my gosh, you guys can see here my little like Danessa Myricks branded palette. By the way, yes, I'm so lazy that um, I just keep mixing things on here. And then when it's completely covered, I like clean the entire thing off. So really quick, let me just download those for you. So on my cheeks here, I have a mix of the Sweet Nectar Vision Flush and Nude Number no. 4 in the Color Fix. That is this little baby right here, just over the top of that bronzer shade that we used. Well, what I was using as a bronzer shade. And then for a little bit of like highlight action, I didn't want anything too glowy because I want you guys to be able to see what this looks like at the end of the day. I just tapped on a very, very small amount of tiara in the Vision Flush as well. And then on my eyes, I have the Color Fix and Exposed in my crease. And then I tapped on a little bit of Ballerina uh, onto the center of the lid. So that is that there. On my lips is a mix of, let's see what I concocted here. I have the shade Latte. I would say it was like half Latte and half of the gloss. And really honestly, the gloss just almost like sheared it out a little bit. This is the glaze. It's the glaze. It's the clear one. It's the clear glaze anyway. And then, um, so I would say it's like halvesies and it just helped me spread the Latte shade out a little bit more without getting it too pigmented. Cause I just wanted to sort of like even out my, uh, my lip color. So it's like a me, but more even kind of thing. Now that you've seen so now that you've seen the Yummy Skin Balm on my skin with other products, you'll have to let me know what you think. Personally, I think that this right now looks so good. Like it honestly, so I don't wanna say that it looks like skin because truly I feel like my skin is a little bit more shiny than this. So this looks like refined skin, you know? Like, cause you don't see any bumps. You don't see any texture. Like it looks really good. I mean, I will say like the other products that I used on the face also aren't overly glowy. And I did that with purpose because I wanted you to see what this looks like throughout the day. If you take the Vision Flush, which I would say are more of like a satin finish, whether it's Tiara, which is the shimmer shade, or it's one of the colors like Sweet Nectar that I used, that's gonna be more satin, whereas the Color Fix were matte. So the Color Fix that I used, uh, the Nude 4 shade, that's gonna be more matte on the skin, so I probably created like a, like a satin matte. Yeah, so I wanted to do that so that you guys could see the longevity and how glowy or not this gets throughout the day. So again, you'll have to let me know what you think, but I feel very confident right now. I feel very, very refined, and I feel like while this isn't like glowy, dewy makeup, it's very flattering makeup. So now I am going to dash outside with my iPhone and take a little natural light footage so that you can see. I will of course also be putting in clips of this makeup at the end of the day. I should be able to get at least eight hours out of this, but I will say I've worn this for 10 to 12 hours before so I can give you all of my thoughts in my tips and tricks at the end of this video. And uh, again, those swatches as well in case you were curious about other bronzing products from Danessa. Hey lovelies, here in indirect natural light, please excuse the noise, but I am outside. So again, this is about an hour into applying the Yummy Skin Balm. And please keep in mind, again, the skincare today was all but non-existent. Uh, the sunscreen lotion that I put on was the CeraVe AM, and I find that that's not incredibly hydrating. It's like just the basics of the basics, but that also can give you a true depiction of what this would be like if you're not like me and love slathering all the things all over your face. But uh, I will check in with you in a little bit. It's getting crazy out here. Hey lovelies, back for the end of the night check-in. I have had this makeup on for about nine hours now, which I think is pretty good. It's not the longest I've ever gone, but it's pretty good. Uh, I didn't do anything too crazy today, but I did sit outside in the sun, in the hot, hot weather for a while, hopefully to get a little like temperature test of this. So I probably did get about an hour to an hour and a half's worth of sun. Uh, and it was, it was fairly hot outside. So I feel like this looks really still pretty good. I don't feel like it's worn off at all. I feel like the skin looks pretty good. I have a tiny little bit of settling here in the corners, but I can just kind of like buff that out. Now, one thing that I will honestly say is this right now looks more dry than it did in the past when I actually did my skincare. <laughs> I will say prepping your skin for this product, 
you know, whatever that means for you living your best skincare life, I would definitely recommend doing so before you put this on. Since I slacked a little bit, I do feel like this looks a little bit more dry than it did before. A little bit more of that powdery finish just because I didn't have all of my normal skincare on underneath. I also can just tell that from the way that my under eye looks because I didn't put any of this product up underneath my under eye, but I can just tell that this looks a little bit more dehydrated than it normally does. But I don't have any oil on my nose. I do feel like the product looks just a little bit dry on my nose, but it's, it's not too bad. So that for me definitely means that if you are on the dry skin side, I wouldn't say if you are just like not normal to dry. If you are totally dry, I don't think you're gonna really enjoy this product, but you probably aren't even really even looking towards this product, right? Probably not. So I will say like, I think you need to be normal to dry at the most to really be able to enjoy this product. And of course, if you are in that normal to dry, make sure that you hydrate well, make sure you get a good amount of moisture on your skin before you use this product. I think for me also another thing is that I did use the product as a primer base and then I went over it over the top. So that was another layer of this product, which again, I think I would really just stick to, you know, that first initial base layer or using the primer, probably not both. The bronzer shade, I think you can still see a decent bit of it. It's probably worn down a little bit, but I do feel like I still have some of it. And I went about my day as I normally would. Like <laughs> I tend to, you know, I think I remember if I was like filming and taking a picture or something and I had my hand on my face. So I've definitely been touching my skin probably about the amount as I normally would, which is probably good when you're doing an everyday wear test. This definitely was about my everyday. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a peek. Really quick, I am going to go through with the universal shade and I'm going to try using this balm as a touch up. So I, I highly doubt, I really doubt I'm going to like doing this. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is take it on the back of my hand and then just take my finger and press this in. Now. I don't really have any reason to touch up right now because there's truly like nothing, there's nothing to like blot away. Yeah, so see, I feel like just putting that little bit over my nose, I'll have to look back at the footage when I go to edit this, but I do feel like it just pulled up some of the product right there in just tapping it on. I do think that, I don't know, maybe if you're using a puff and pressing it on, that might work, but I just don't, I just don't really see this balmy type of a product being that great for a touch up. So now like looking at my nose and I'll have to look back at the footage to see, but I feel like this almost looks a bit more red, like it pulled up what was on my nose, not like smoothing it out or, you know, I really didn't have any oil to blot, but if I did, Again, I think that the last time I used this product, it just picked up what was on my face. So I really don't see using this. Maybe if you're using it on a puff, it might work differently, but I'm just not willing to try it. I won't be using this on any clients for touch up and I won't be using it on myself for touch up either. I will just end up using a powder or a blotting paper or something. But again, I just wanted to give you a little quick look at my nine hour skin. I'll just zoom you in and then we will move on to my final thoughts and all of my tips and tricks with using this product. Cause I definitely feel like I've run it through the gamut. Really quick, I took a little clip on my iPhone after a long day at work when I prepped my skin well and only used the Yummy Skin Balm shade three. I did not use the universal or the bronzer shade. So here you can see it unlayered with adequate hydration. Here we go. Today I wore the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm and this is me at about 10 hours in. Can that be right? Hold on, let me do the math real quick. Yeah, about nine or 10 hours in. So it looks really good. I feel great. If you like something that isn't like majorly covered, this looks really, really great. So I just wanted to show you that. All right, lovelies, let's dig in to the nitty gritty on my thoughts on these products. Like I said, I have used this as a primer, I've used it as a base product, and I've used it as a bronzer altogether and all separate. So I feel like I've got, I've got a lot of thoughts here. So the universal shade I do think is actually quite translucent. And I think that that is going to work well for a lot of skin tones. Like, you know, sometimes they say that something is going to work on all skin tones and you're like, mm, I don't, I don't really think so. This is not the case with that. I do think that this product is really going to work on all skin tones, all skin depths. So I really do appreciate that. 
do I think that this product is life altering as a primer? No. So the way that I use this as a primer on its own was with my, <laughs> this is sad because the product is splitting, but I use this with my Complexion Rescue uh, Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. You know that I really, really love this product, but it is more on the glowy side. And so I feel like sometimes it isn't as flattering like I was talking about with texture. It's very, very natural, but it does show pores. It doesn't enhance them by any means, but it does show what's there. So I thought, great, I will put this on and maybe I'll feel like it's brought down a little bit in that way, like as a blurring primer. I didn't find that at all. Once I put it on, like I did half and half, I was like, okay, I don't really notice any difference. And I didn't notice any difference necessarily throughout the day. I will say I did feel like my nose was a little less shiny that I will say. I guess for me, I do kind of wonder with this product, if buffing a moist foundation over the top of this product is going to kind of like make it mix in or make it less likely to lay on the skin and absorb that oil. I'm not quite sure, but I'm wondering if that's maybe what happened. I just didn't notice huge benefits. My skin didn't look any different. And while maybe here the glow was less significant, I don't know that it was worth like using it underneath products. And I will say I'm also not much of a primer wearer. I don't really do primer that often. It's usually my skincare and then right in with whatever base products I'm using. Usually I try to wait like three minutes before I put on my base products, but I don't regularly wear primer every single day. So for me, the universal shade is maybe something that I will use mostly on days where I'm not gonna be wearing any makeup or like no base makeup. And I just want something to like cut down on shine, especially in the summer. I really am curious to try this when it starts to get hot, especially if it does absorb sweat a little bit. And then maybe this will just give me a fresh feel on my face. But I don't think that it's something that I will throw under a lot of other products. I just, I just don't think so. I also thought that this might be great as a touch-up product. And I am sad to say, I don't think that that is the case. I don't think that's the case with this for me personally. Now, I might actually try to do that tonight on top of what I currently am wearing because the time that I used this as a touch-up product, it was over, again, another foundation. It wasn't over the balm itself. And it did not go well, y'all. It did not go well. <laughs> so what happened was the first time I tried the Universal Shade as a primer, I went to do the half and half situation as we do, and I realized that I hadn't put any on my nose. And I was like, oh, that was dumb because the nose is where I tend to get shiny and it's where my product usually slips off throughout the day. So I thought, Kelly, the one place that you really need to put this is your nose. So I already had my foundation on and I thought, well, I'll just tap a little over the top. The minute I did that and I just used a little bit worked into my fingers, the minute I did that with my fingers, everything broke up on my nose. Like it just got very much like you could see the pores. I had those little like freckle, those beige freckles where everything just like kind of settled into my pores and the top of my skin was like naked. Did not love that so much. So then what I basically did was I kind of like blotted all of that off, then put the universal down and then put the foundation over the top. Now I will say I did notice again that my nose was less shiny by the end of the day by doing that. It didn't look any different at first, but it was less shiny at the end of the day. So I'm curious to see what this is like on top of itself at, you know, at touch up points throughout the day. But here's my feeling on that. And I'm very intrigued by this. So we're gonna, we're gonna take a sidestep here. On the Danessa Myricks website, she talks a lot about using the fingers. There's a little promo video where it talks about like, just tap and blend with your fingers. No. I, I don't really recommend doing that. The times that I've done that, especially with the tinted product, it gets very streaky slash blotchy looking. I think you really need a firm foundation brush or a sponge for this. And I will say one time I used a less dense brush and it looked fairly streaky and I just had to pat over it with a sponge or with something more dense and it like, went in seamlessly. But I think if you're using your fingers or you're using a fluffy brush, it, it just, it just doesn't work. It really just doesn't work. And Danessa herself talked about this specific brush, uh, that she found that was best to apply it with. 
So it's like, okay, well on your website, you talk about using your fingers. Now she doesn't say that you can't use a brush, but she talks about using your fingers a lot. And then now she's talking about using this like dense brush. I'm a little confused by that, but I really don't recommend using your fingers with this. I will try doing that at the end of the night, but that's really a bummer for me because that is something that I was kind of hoping to be able to use this product for if I wanted to throw one in my kit to have it as like a touch up product that maybe didn't look as powdery as a powder, but still kind of did the same thing. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. We'll see after this little experiment tonight. So again, I would say use a dense brush or use a sponge. If you use a sponge, obviously you're going to shear it out even further. So just know that obviously anytime you're using a damp sponge, that's going to be the case. Again, for using this as a foundation product, set your expectations where they need to be. A balmy product like this that's pretty thin is probably not gonna be a high coverage situation. Sorry for the sirens. I really don't think that this product is that great layered upon itself. Again, if you think about it, this is a balm, but it also is a powder. So if you're doing a powder and then you're layering a powder over the top and then you're layering a powder over the top. Now, if I use this as a primer and as a base product, let's say I also am trying to up the coverage of that. So I've put another layer on, I have more powder and then God forbid, I go to put more over the top as a touch up. Like you're just adding so much. So I do feel like that's gonna be when you see more texture is if you don't do this in like a thin amount on the face. I personally am super happy with the amount of coverage that I have here, but if you love a high coverage, I don't think that this product is going to be for you. For using this product as a bronzer, shade selection aside, we're gonna talk about the shades in just a moment, but just the product alone. So if you know me, you will know that I love cream products. I love cream highlighters, cream blushes, cream bronzers, all of it. I love a cream bronzer because it really can be blended out so beautifully. They just look really like yummy on the skin, no pun intended here. <laughs> But I also find that there's something lovely in the velvety blurred out finish of a powder bronzer. And for a lot of people, a powder bronzer is just more user friendly. Sometimes with creams, depending on the formula, they can get a little patchy. Sometimes they're easy to like apply too much of. So I was excited because I thought that this would be a great product to like meet in the middle. So here's how I feel about that. Um, I did just talk about using this product on top of itself. So. I personally think, now granted today, I think that these two look really good together because I've done very thin layers of them. So I think if you're using a thin layer of this product as your base and then you go in with a bronzer shade, I think you're gonna be really happy. I also think that if you use this on top of another foundation product, it could be really great. But just know that there are limits here because it isn't the most saturated product compared to some other bronzing products. So let me show you right now, we'll talk about shades, but let me show you the clips of the other Janessa Myricks products I have. So you can see that the top shade is the Yummy Skin Balm in the shade six. And then I have the Vision Flush in Toasted Almond. Now this is obviously a much more cool toned shade. It is what I use as like a contour, almost like bronzer, like especially in the winter and springtime, it's a beautiful, just like defining shade. And then on the bottom, I have the Danessa Myricks Balm Contour in medium one. So to me, the top shade is definitely in that like yellowy green, like obviously it's not straight yellow green, right? But it definitely has that tinge of an undertone. Whereas the Vision Flush and Toasted Almond has that more cool undertone. And then medium one is definitely more of that true golden shade. I will be honest, I cannot use that contour balm shade unless it is in the dead of summer. Not because it's too dark, but because it is really, really warm. I'm still confused on this. I'm still confused on how a contour product can be so warm. It, it still confuses me a little bit. I really only use this as a cream bronzer. So you will also see here, now I have a clip where I built up that uh, yummy skin balm a little bit more so that you can see the depth of the tone, the saturation of this tone rather you are never going to apply this product that thick to your face. At least you shouldn't <laughs> because it looks like a cream to powder product all over your skin. It doesn't, it looks like makeup y'all. It looks very makeup-y that thick. So I really think that this is just gonna give you a very natural bronze look. Like looking at my skin right now, it just looks very defined. I just feel more sculpted. I feel like I have a bit of color and, you know, highs and lows to my face. It's not contour by any means, but it has a bit of shape. I actually really like it. So personally, I would say that if you are looking to use this as a bronzer product, just know that you're not going to get like 
high, high pigment. Maybe if you got a really deep shade, you would be able to do that. I just don't know the blendability of that, if that's gonna look natural at the end of the day. But for me, if you're just looking for a soft bronzer, this might be a beautiful product for you. So in regards to the Yummy Skin Balm, I understand that primarily these were probably meant to be used as base products. Danessa is just opening it up as an opportunity to wear it as a bronzer if you want to. Also, in all honesty, to, to sell more. I'm just gonna be honest right there. It's probably just to sell more, to be really like, ooh, I can use this in so many ways. With the balm contour, I still don't understand. I don't understand why we have such warm, warm shades. Now, I will say that I do think that she does a really good job helping cater to deeper skin tones who probably have a bit warmer undertone. So maybe this works really great as a product for that person who is a true number six and has that olive undertone. I'm very excited for olive skinned lovelies because it is very hard to find good olive shades on the market. It really is. So I'm excited for olive skinned people to be using this as a base product. Just be aware that if you, especially if you are fair and you get this as a bronzer, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to look. So that's kind of my, my roundup of the bronzer. So you've probably already guessed that I really think that the true area that this product shines is when used as a light coverage base product. I love the look of this. I think that this is very like soft filter. It is like that soft matte. I mean, we are still only, you know, an hour and a half into me wearing this, but I will tell you, I have loved the way that this looks throughout the day. If you are okay with a lighter coverage product and you like this sort of like more natural matte look, I think you're gonna love this. And you know that I love a good glow. I love a good glowy skin moment, but I have been finding that I feel super confident and more flawless with a slightly less glowy look. I don't necessarily think it looks as youthful, if you will, but I think it's more flattering because you don't see as much texture. So take that for what you will. You really just have to decide the mo in the moment what you're really looking for, but I've loved this at the end of the day. It does let a little bit of glow through. I feel like this helps control oil, but doesn't leave me feeling crispy, crunchy. You know that I am not a big powder wearer. I usually just put a little bit under my eyes like I did today and maybe a soft veil of something really, really finely milled all over, if at all. So I love this product for that when I'm just looking for something that I can quickly put on and just have that like soft focus finish. I think it's also going to be great moving into the summer when I just tend to be a little bit more sweaty. So again, universal for me is probably just going to be that product that I wear on no makeup makeup days or at least no base makeup days. I could see like throwing a little bit of that on with like a little bit of like blush or bronzer and some mascara and like being done and just having that like hot girl summer, but like not sweaty girl summer moment, not super shiny girl summer moment, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. I think that just about anyone could wear this. However, I truly would say for the very dry skinned person, I just don't see why you would want this product. You don't have to worry about oil control. Maybe if you're a super sweaty dry person, you just want something to like have to soak up some of the sweat perhaps. But I really think that normal to dry, you could totally love this product if you prep your skin properly, which of course is with any base product. Uh, even today with doing minimal skincare, I really think that this looks very good. For oily skin, which I don't personally have, I don't see why you wouldn't like this. I think that, you know, if you use a light layer of this, uh, you would really enjoy it. But you have to really be okay with that lightweight coverage because you can't really like stack a lot of this on your skin. I think it's just gonna look too textured. It's just not textured as in your skin's gonna look more textured, but the product itself is just gonna build up. You're gonna have a lot, a lot of powder feel on your face. And again, speaking of oily skin lovelies, again, I mentioned before that my friend Aileen over at Amerge Beauty did purchase this in three shades. I know that she did a wear test and will be sharing her opinion with you. I know that we definitely both have some thoughts on these products. So if you are curious, she is in that, I would say like medium skin tone. So I will be leaving Aileen's video down below in case you do wanna check that out. So let's have a little like repurchase or regret moment here. Let's do a little check-in. I bought three shades. If I could do it all over again, what would I do? In all honesty, I would probably just buy shade number three. 
The bronzer shade for me is a little off. I do like the way it looks today, but it's, it's not a need. It's not a need in my life. The universal shade isn't going to be as widely used in my in my life in my kit so i'm a little bit bummed about that again i will use it on like no makeup days for just like that soft filter effect but it it just isn't a need i mean i could obviously use another product another like mattifying primer that i probably have a couple of in my drawer to be able to pull out in the summertime so that one again isn't necessarily a need the convenience of having a compact might be kind of nice but again this just isn't something that I'm gonna like throw on with my fingers. I really like using it with a brush. So then there's like a little bit of an inconvenience factor as far as like having to have a brush with me. So there are my thoughts. If I could do it again, I would probably just pick out one of these shades and not all three. And by the way, I did wanna mention, I actually purchased from Camera Ready Cosmetics. This was one of my first purchases with the brand. I had I had a good experience. The shipping did take me a little bit to get here, but um, if you have not checked out Camera Ready Cosmetics, they have so many great things on their site. The reason I purchased from them is uh, they had it up quickly, A, and I also was purchasing a couple other things for my kit. So if you are a makeup artist or you're looking to have some fun makeup artistry tools, definitely check them out. I will link them down below as well. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any other questions about this product, please go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I hope that I answered any questions that you may have. Again, this is my full, thorough, honest review. I hope this video wasn't too long, but I know that I timestamped this for all of you because your time is really valuable to me. And I do really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to spend it with me. That is it, lovelies. Have a great day and I'll see you really soon.